Hey guys, and welcome to this edition of Scruff's Garage. So today I'm working on my Jeep Gladiator, and what I'm gonna be installing today is a track bar brace. Uh, now if you watched my previous videos, you know I installed a Rusty's off-road uh, two inch lift. That lift comes with a, a track bar brace included. It's not extra, it's included, which is kinda nice. And it's actually a very well-made uh, track bar brace. A uh, nice thick metal, good welds, very nice coating. The reason I didn't install it at the same time that I installed the lift is because I was on the wait list for the steering gearbox uh, TSB. And it was a long wait list. I just didn't want to have any issues at the dealership with them having to work around uh, an aftermarket component to do the TSB. Uh, so I held off on installing that at the time. Now, after I had the TSB done, while a lot of people reported very good results with the, up, the new updated uh, steering gearbox, to me it was largely unchanged. I still have a kind of a dead zone in, in the middle. It wanders a little bit. It's not the end of the world, uh, but certainly it's something that, that I notice. <clears throat> so as I got back around to finally installing the track bar brace, I finally decided that if I'm going to go through the hassle of doing it, then I think I would prefer to have the track bar brace from Synergy, which includes a sector shaft brace uh, as well. So that's really what I'm going to be installing today. And there are some differences here uh, that, that I'll point out for you. So number one, and I had questioned Rusty's Off-Road about this after I got the new gearbox installed. I'd asked them, it didn't seem like the gearbox bolts would be long enough once you got the thickness of this bracket in place. Just didn't seem like there was enough bolt uh, protruding through the end of the steering gearbox. And I was a little concerned about that. So I called them and talked to them at the time. Now this is a, maybe almost a, a year ago at this point, they had not heard of any issues with the bolts not being long enough. And they said, just reuse the, the factory bolts. What's interesting is that when I got the Synergy kit, and this is an updated kit, and we'll, we'll talk about a couple of the changes. But one of the things they now include, and there's a, a note in here that due to Chrysler's recent TSB about the steering gearbox, that if you have the new updated steel gearbox, that the mounting bolts for the gearbox aren't long enough when you install the track bar brace. So they actually include four new mounting bolts for the gearbox. So I feel a little validated in that because I was concerned that those factory bolts, they just didn't look long enough. And so it's nice to see that Synergy is including these. Uh, if you need to know for reference, these are an M12 with a 1.5 uh, thread pitch and they're 120 millimeters long. If you get the Synergy kit, they're included, but if you needed to replace them for some reason, or if you were going to install the Rusty's off-road one and you've had the TSB done, or you have one of the newer model gladiators that already came with the new gearbox, then you may want to go source your own bolts um, to do that instead of reusing the factory bolts. One of the other changes, I call this maybe the 2.0 version of the Synergy sector shaft brace. They now include, so this is the uh, gearbox, the um, Pitman arm nut. They now machine it to accept, and they include these two O-rings. <clears throat> that go, they have a machine groove there, and then the thicker O-ring fits up here towards the bottom uh, of the nut. What that does is it prevents uh, dirt and moisture, sand, salt, whatever, especially if you live up north where they salt the roads, or if you're out on the beach quite a bit, that stuff can get inside the, the bearing and cause binding issues. Uh, it will wash out the grease, stuff can get in there and I've heard a few instances where it spun this bushing uh, in the, this little little bracket and so this just causes some problems there. So they've kind of redesigned it, they've introduced these O-rings and of course these would be easy to replace if you needed to at a future point. They've also done, uh, they've added a set screw here on the back side so it helps lock that bushing in place and actually this grease fitting protrudes into the bushing uh, as well to help lock it in place. So less issue of this bushing rotating and then you can't get any grease into it. And so you, that creates a lot of problems. 
Uh, everything else comes in, in the hardware kit, uh, pretty complete. They even include a nice little tube of red Loctite for you, which is a nice to have. The other thing I'll point out that may be outside of your normal tool set is that this uh, Pitman arm nut for the gearbox is a 42 millimeter, uh, requires a 42 millimeter socket. So I didn't have a 42 millimeter, so I, I ordered one on Amazon. This is from, I think this was SunX, uh, but it's a 42 millimeter and it's a very snug fit. Um, so you may not have one of these. I'm, I did have this. This is a 1 and 11 sixteenths. It's a little looser. It, it's probably closer to a 43 millimeter. In a pinch, I might have tried this. It's a 12 point socket, which I also don't love. It puts more pressure on the, the corners uh, of the nut. It, had this been a six point, that might have worked. I mentioned that because this 1 and 11 sixteenths socket is a bit more common. I believe this fits some Ford applications for the axle nut. So when you go looking for a nut uh, for a socket, this is a more common size than the 42 millimeter. It, it probably would have worked, but I just didn't want to risk damaging this. So I went ahead and just bought a dedicated uh, 42 millimeter socket. So, and I'll put a link to that uh, in the episode notes if I can. Uh, that way, if you need one, you know where to, to go find one. Uh, the rest of this, they include a pretty detailed uh, instruction. I, I would encourage you to familiarize yourself with it uh, before you start taking things apart. The process will just go a little bit easier. So I'm going to dive into it, and I'll let you know how we, how we progress along. All right, just to give you a look at uh, what we're starting with. Uh, so I think the first thing I'm going to do, what I'm going to have to do, um, is take out the track bar uh, bolt, the frame bolt. That way we can drop the track bar down and get to the, the nut on the bottom of the uh, steering gearbox. And that's probably going to be easier to do uh, and replace while the tires are still on the ground. Uh, that way when I go to torque the new nut, um, it's not trying to turn the gearbox and turn the tires. If, if it's up in the air, um, it's going to want to turn things instead of uh, tightening uh, the bolt. Other thing I'll, I'll just point out to you, is if I can hold this where you can can see it, but keep in mind that there is a, a thickness uh, to this. So they give some specs about how much clearance you need. So I've got the Rusty's Off-Road Track Bar, which kind of has a rise to it to clear the, the pumpkin uh, for the axle. Obviously there's not a ton of, of clearance in here. Um, I got about two and a half inches of lift from my Rusty's two inch lift. Once I added the bumper and the winch, I think I lost about a half inch. So I'm sitting right at about a, a two inch lift. Now I do have um, the uh, bump stop uh, ex extensions as well. So they give some specs, uh, you can read about that online, about how much clearance you need here. I think mine's gonna be fairly close. And I do have in the back of my head that if this is too close, especially when that the suspension flexes uh, that I may go back and add a half inch or three quarter inch spacer uh, in the front to get back some of the the clearance that I lost as I added heavier components like the bumper and the winch uh, so it's just something to think about I'll show you that after we're done um, and we'll see how much of a clearance issue it, it is or it isn't so uh, I'll keep moving with this and uh, we'll check in as we make progress you're all right quick update I uh, got the new uh, nut on and torque to spec is 184 foot pounds. Um, I will say, shout out where it's due. This uh, porter cable, their 20 volt uh, half inch drive impact. This thing is a beast. Um, no problem taking the old nut off or tightening this one. I mean, obviously, uh, you set it with um, a torque wrench, but. For taking out bolts, if you don't want to fire up the air compressor or if you don't have an air compressor, uh, this thing takes off lug nuts. Um, these That Pitman arm uh, nut, really, I've done a lot of things with this. I'm very impressed. So uh, shout out where it's due. All right, uh, I'm going to keep going. Um, we've got to get the frame bolts out. It's these guys here and there's two more on that side uh, to do that. 
Um, this tire, I'm going to have to take that out of the way. And the sway bar is probably going to be in the way as well because we're going to have to get to a couple of bolts uh, there. Um, so we'll keep moving and uh, I'll show you how I set it up. Quick update. Uh, so I disconnected the uh, upper sway bar end link, took the top bolt out so I could rotate. And you got to take it out on both sides, but then I could rotate the sway bar down just to kind of get it out of the way. Um, and then I jacked up this side to take the uh, tire off. That way I have access uh, to the gearbox bolts. Um, and if you haven't seen it before, just talking about neat tools. This is a, it's like a bottle jack and a jack stand uh, built into one, which makes it convenient if you've got a, a particular mounting <coughs> or jacking location um, that you want to use. Uh, it's kind of all built into one, so it's kind of convenient. So. Anyway, we're making progress, so um, I'll check in again here in a second. Okay, so a quick update. I took out the factory gearbox bolts. So those came out. Uh, when you take the last one out, you'll probably want to hold up the bottom of the, the gearbox somewhat. It's not going to fall very far, uh, but it will shift a little bit and put some tension on the bolt as it comes out. To get these um, started again, these are the new bolts that come with the the synergy bracket i put let's see if you can see not really you can see the orange handle in here there's a um it's a pry bar to help lift up on the the gearbox just a little bit and that helped getting these bolts aligned a lot easier it's kind of lift up on it just a little bit and you can get these started um we've still got the bolts here and here um so before, any, you know, nothing's tight yet, but this just gets it aligned so that nothing's uh, drooping. Uh, you also want to take your track bar bolt that, that's applied and run it through as well. Uh, that way you make sure you've got things aligned. Um, the last thing you want to do is get all this tight and then realize that you can't get the track bar bolt in. So we're making progress. Uh, we'll keep moving and I'll, I'll check in again in a second. All right, next update. So at this point, I've installed the little uh, sector shaft, I guess you call that the brace. Uh, make sure you install the two O-rings on the sector shaft nut and apply some grease to those so that you don't tear when you're sliding that on. And I, I smeared some grease around that nut as well. Now we'll come back at the end and grease it with this grease fitting, um, but I like to have a little bit of grease in there as we assemble it. <clears throat> and of course, I mentioned earlier the set screw, but make sure you've got that installed. Um, before you put this on, uh, it would be very difficult to get to afterwards. They recommend that you leave all the nuts and bolts loose until you've got everything kind of aligned and then they've got a, a torque sequence uh, that they recommend. However, I could not even get this bolt here started and there's a, a tapered head bolt on the back side that goes into the back side of, of this. Um, neither one of those could I get started until I tightened the um, gearbox frame bolts. Um, it just, it needed to bring the whole bracket in a little bit before that would even get close enough to get started. So just, I, I don't know, I guess be mindful of that. And then they recommend um, starting with these, so this bolt, then this bolt, um, then your frame bolts, and then these. Um, this one's actually last, the one of the tapered bolt on the back, uh, which helps center things, and then that one. Um, and then we can reinstall oh, my flashlight just dead um, our track bar and all that sort of thing so um, we're getting close so I'm gonna I've torqued these two and now I've got to move on to the frame bolts all right here's a look uh, we're almost finished so I've got the sway bar in link uh, reconnected on this side all the bolts are torqued uh, the track bar bolt is not in yet I need the Jeep uh, the front axle sitting level uh, to get that lined up. Um, where that grease fitting is, uh, the way it's pointed, I need to turn the steering wheel a little bit uh, to be able to get a grease fitting on that uh, appropriately. So again, I can do that once the vehicle is on the ground. Um, I will say I'm impressed with, with what a precision fit everything is. Like everything lines up, the bolts fit. Like when you follow the instructions, follow the torque spec, um, or, or the torque sequence, 
everything seems to, to line up reasonably well. Um, so yeah, I, so far pretty impressed. The only thing to keep an eye on, if you see that the that bushing sits just a little bit lower than the uh, sector shaft nut. I've heard some guys uh, needing to put a spacer in um, to lower that, uh, like a, a large washer above the sector shaft nut to space that down a little bit. Um, so I'll check that out and keep an eye on it. It may be something I need to go back and do. But at this point, I'm ready to put the tires and wheels back on and uh, we'll keep going. Okay, so I decided I wasn't content with the gap uh, down at the bottom of the uh, sector shaft brace. Uh, that the nut uh, sits a little higher and the brace is a little lower. And so you're not really getting the benefit of that O-ring on the top. <clears throat> so to solve that, I'm going to space down the sector shaft nut. Uh, to do that, I went and looked around Lowe's to see if I could find um, a washer or something that would work. They really didn't have anything large enough. <clears throat> so here's the old uh, steering gearbox nut, pitman arm nut, sector shaft nut, uh, all referring to the same thing. So I used this as a, as a reference point because obviously the washer has to be large enough uh, that it will slip over that. So I don't know how well you can see. This is a one and one eighth inch opening in this washer. I found these, these are from Hillman. I ended up having to order them on Amazon. I just couldn't find them uh, locally. I mean, maybe I could have gone to Fastenal or somewhere like that. Um, depending on how much time you have, you can drive around and search. But I found these on Amazon. They're from Hillman. It's part number 280336. Now, unfortunately, they come as a pack of 10. I only needed one uh, for my application. Depending on how yours is lining up, you, you might need two of them. I, it, I can't tell you. You'll have to, to look at it and measure for yourself. But uh, I think these are going to work out pretty well. So this is a 1 and 1 eighth inside diameter and about a 2 and 3 sixteenths outside diameter. So it, it works out pretty well. If I can kind of hold it where you could see it. Um, you've got just a little bit of the washer sticking out around the uh, the nut. So I think that will, will work well. And this ends up being, um, it is uh, 0 0.145 in thickness. Uh, 0.125 is an eighth. So it's just over an eighth, but less than 3 sixteenths. So um, depending on how thick of a washer you need, uh, you can uh, change accordingly depending on what you need but I'll leave, leave a link to these in the episode notes so if this might be something that works for you uh, you at least have an option I think it was like $13 for the pack of 10 so they're a little bit expensive um, but I'm sure I'll find some other uses for them I don't mind having extra hardware uh, available in the in the shop so back to the Jeep um, I'll have to, I won't have to take the whole uh, bracket off but I will have to take the sector shaft uh, brace loose and then back to our 42 millimeter socket to take the nut off I'll put the washer in place retighten everything uh, so a little bit of work hate to do it twice uh, but I'm not content moving on uh, until that's done so back to the Jeep okay so we had a brief setback this afternoon when I got the nut off and got the bracket off I realized that it had cut the old the original o-ring uh, most likely on installation, it took out this section of it. So I, I guess it's actually good that I was servicing it. But that also meant that I had to go find a replacement O-ring uh, this afternoon. Uh, Lowe's didn't have it, uh, but Ace Hardware did. And they have a much better selection um, for nuts and bolts and O-rings and this sort of thing. This is the O-ring uh, pack that I ended up getting. It's probably a little small. I think the inside inside diameter is should probably be more like one and three eighths, uh, but since these are a rubber O-ring, there was enough stretch. Um, 
because this is a, a very thin o-ring uh, it's a, a 1 16th and there's really not enough room to go to a, a larger size so it gets a little difficult to find uh, a large enough inside diameter in that thin size they typically go up to like 3 16th when they go to a, a larger diameter uh, but this size seems to have worked that's what's uh, installed on here now and I think that will fit so uh, shout out to Ace Hardware for having uh, a good selection of o-rings so anyway um, I'm back now to finish the installation uh, with the spacer and we'll keep going okay so I thought I'd give you a shot of this before I put the track bar uh, back in place but you can see there we go with the spacer in place the bushing fits uh, very completely on the uh, the nut now <clears throat> um, before it you know obviously it was uh, up the nut was further up in there there was maybe a an eighth or a little more so this put it uh, just perfect I'm really happy with with how that turned out um, so all I have to do now is put the track bar back in place uh, I'll pump it full of some more grease of course um, I greased it before I put the o-rings on and <clears throat> put this bronze uh, bushing back in place uh, but I'll pack it full of grease with the uh, the grease fitting as well so uh, we're almost finished okay so I take you for just a, a quick test drive uh, like I said I've been driving on this for about a week now and I can tell you it is tighter uh, I can definitely tell it made an improvement right I still have some like play in the steering wheel but that you know the underlying characteristics of a lifted Jeep on 35s are still there did it make an improvement yes but is it some kind of like night and day miracle cure I can't believe now it handles like a sports car kind of thing no uh, but I do feel like it made an improvement so I'm glad I spent my own personal money on this I'm glad I took the time to install it I'm happy with it it did make it uh, tighter I think any of the initial play when you first started to turn the wheel uh, that was taking up any slack in the system whether it was the the track bar itself or track bar mount uh, flexing a little bit or the gearbox to the frame rail uh, starting to flex whatever that is uh, I think that was the initial kind of softness in the the steering that is gone and so now when you turn the wheel you're actually turning the tires and there's there's more resistance to that uh, so the steering feels a little bit tighter and that's a good thing that's a that's complimentary um, it's just an observation that it is you feel a little bit tighter in the steering so overall I'd say worthwhile again not a miracle cure night and day kind of change but uh, a 10 20 percent noticeable improvement and for that I think it's worthwhile so um, that wraps this up um, if you have any questions about anything that I did or some of the service parts that I had to go find uh, feel free to leave a question in the comments below I'll, I'll answer anything that I can and I'll try to put links uh, to some of the stuff I had to get uh, in the episode notes as well that way uh, you can go find it for yourself as well as always, thanks for tuning in to this edition of Scruff's Garage. We'll see you next time.